Hi, my name is Dominic Palazzolo and I'm the owner of Marvelous Molds. And today I'd like to show you a new invention, a new product that I've discovered and created in conjunction with James Rizel. Now James has traveled all over the world teaching classes on how to make sugar flowers and how to embellish cakes beautifully with them. And so this tool is something that I created in order to enable you, maybe you're a hobbyist, maybe, maybe you're not a professional, but you would like to get that look of the sugar flowers that James makes. Well, this tool is going to enable you to do that. And I worked with James in order to create what we call a petalier. Now, this is a really cool tool, and what it does is it enables you to make five hydrangeas, and it cuts, and it veins, and creates five perfect flowers in a very quick amount of time. So a lot of you who would have thought that you'd like to make flowers, you know, the beautiful gum paste flowers that you put on cakes, as James Rizel makes and teaches all over the world, this tool is something that can really help you do that. And all you need to do is learn how to use a petalier and it'll enable you to make beautiful flowers. So without further delay, I'd like to go into the process of how to make these wonderful hydrangeas. So let's get started. What we're doing is we're working with gum paste here, but obviously you can use uh, fondant or modeling chocolate if you'd like. Um, when you're working with gum paste or fondant, you may find it's a little sticky or a little soft. And I really recommend that you introduce a little bit of this. It's called Tylos and it's a gum. And what I do is I will just sprinkle maybe about one level case, tablespoon per pound of, of the Tylos onto my board. And then what I'll do is I will just work it into my fondant. Now, usually I have a lot more than this, but I'm just showing you how to incorporate Tylos into fondant or gum paste. And what it does is it absorbs the excess moisture that you have, especially if you make your own or, or it's marshmallow fondant, which can be rather sticky, and it absorbs that free sugar and, and water that's in the actual structure, and it makes it much drier and better to roll and work with. So I use anywhere from maybe a one level tablespoon to, to sometimes two level tablespoons per pound of fondant. With gum paste, it's a little less. Now, let's say you're working with gum paste and it's very tough. I mean, it almost feels like you can repair sidewalks with it. It's very leathery. There are some products that you can buy that are like that. Um, what I would do is I would work in a little fondant into your gum paste. We call that 50-50. That's equal parts of fondant and gum paste. But you can just add fondant to your gum paste in order to get that nice consistency where maybe it's a little softer and then it'll cut better. So what I have here is my gum paste and I've made a color that I hope shows up really well on the camera. and. I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sheet this so that I can put it on top of the petalier and actually get it to the perfect thickness that I need. Okay, what I've done is I've already pre-sheeted my gum paste and I'm going to go over now to this pasta machine. Pasta machine is just a sheeter, okay? And I wanted to let you know that we actually sell this sheeter, this pasta machine now. And uh, what we did was we evaluated it and the rollers are Teflon coated and the, uh, the rollers are also wider than you would normally find on just a pasta machine you could buy on Amazon.com. So we're going to be selling this at a really good price to help you work with petaliers and our onlays 
So those of you who don't have a pasta machine, this would be a good place to get one, and we really like it. Um, now, on our pasta machine, we are going to sheet the gum paste to a setting of number seven. If you have the pasta attachment for uh, a KitchenAid, the setting is a number four. Those of you who have something different, what you have to do is you have to sheet your gum paste to a point where it's going to work on the pedalier, but don't worry because I'm going to show you exactly how to tell when you have the proper thickness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start sheeting my gum paste. And I am at uh, level four, so we're just going to sheet this to a number seven. And so we'll just progress right through that. Okay. So now we have perfectly sheeted gum paste. Now I know there are some of you out there who think you can take a rolling pin and do this. I want to tell you, I was raised in a donut shop where we made our donuts by hand. I was rolling dough since I was 12 years old. I'm really good with a rolling pin, but I can't do this. This is like silk. This is like a fabric. So really, don't fool yourself into thinking that you're going to be able to roll out gum paste especially at the proper thickness. Just get yourself something like a pasta machine or use your KitchenAid attachment in order to be able to sheet something beautiful like this. <clears throat> One of the greatest tools that I, it's, it's my go-to tool, is a pounce. Okay? Now all this is, I like to use a little girl's tights and what I do is I just put about one or two cups of cornstarch in it and then I just tie it shut. And what it does is it just helps me deliver exactly what I need. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just rubbing this pounce over my gum paste and you probably think that I'm not doing anything here but on a microscopic level, I'm laying down molecules of cornstarch and I'm drying the surface, which is really going to help me. Now, when I work with the pedalier, what I'm going to do is actually pounce my cornstarch on there because I need a little more to get down into all these details. Okay, so what I do is I just kind of knock it off. You can brush this off. I, I just knock it off so that what we have is just a dusting, a one molecule thick coating. Now, remember that I pounced or just kind of applied and dried the top surface of the gum paste. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that top surface and put it down right onto the pedalier. Okay? Then I'm just going to press with my fingers and immediately you should see the imprint or the shape of the hydrangeas coming through. This is one of the signs that I wanted to show you so you know on a different machine that you have sheeted it to the correct thickness. You should see this beautiful imprint almost immediately. If you don't, don't get complicated. Just know that it's too thick and go to a higher setting and get this thinner so that it looks like that. Okay? All right. Now, Many of you are familiar with my onlays, and what we would do is we would take a rolling pin right now and we would start rolling, but I'm going to tell you, don't use a rolling pin. What I want you to do is just take your fondant smoother, and again, a beautiful little pounce. All I got to do is just dry the surface, and what I'm going to do now is my first pass, I'm just going to press down onto the pedalier, okay? Now, if you find that your gum paste is sticking, again, take your pounce and just lightly coat and dry that surface. And that will alleviate the problem without putting so much cornstarch on your gum paste that it's actually interfering with the color. So again, press hard, straight down after the first pass, which was kind of light. Now you should see, and I'm looking at my monitor right now, and see how these green lines are starting to come through? 
Okay, that's another sign to you that you have rolled the gum paste to the proper thickness. Okay, now, take your fondant smoother, press and turn, press and turn, okay? This is kind of fun, all right? Just press and turn, and as you do that, you can press and turn both ways, just a quarter turn. This is nothing complicated, okay? Just press and turn, and, and if you want, you can use the, the, the front or tip of the, of the fondant smoother in order to get different areas that may not be cutting over the blades. You can work on that individually. But now, if you look, you can see brilliant, constant, unbroken green lines that is the shape of our hydrangea. And once again, that is a sign to you that you do have the proper thickness. You can even see how we're starting to get some separation from the flower, which is great. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I have done a good job of separating the gum paste over the blade. Now, I'm going to take a needle tool and you can see this area in between the flowers, okay? And what I want to do is just with that needle tool, I want to just kind of poke it and move it around in order to ensure that I have release, okay? So once I've done that, then what I like to do is I just like to take the gum paste and I like to pull it apart like this. And then I'll pull it in, you know, the other direction, side to side, top to bottom. And as you can see, I've got perfect separation. And now we're just going to remove the excess. And we've got our five hydrangeas perfect. Next step. Believe it or not, when you see the hydrangea, okay, once you take these out, you're going to have this beautiful venation, okay? All of that is done for you. You're not going to have to do that at all. In order to make sure that that pattern comes through, just take your finger, and if you know, you know, if it's hot and your fingers are sweaty or you've got, you know, they're sticky, just use your pounce to take away the tack from your fingers, okay, and push down, okay, onto the gum paste or the fondant and make sure that you're picking up the beautiful detail that I designed for you. Now that I've done that, you can have this optional step. And this is like when we're working with an onlay. You can use that cutting blade and you can turn that inward onto the gum paste in order to put a beautiful finished edge on your flower. Now that we have cut the gum paste and removed all the excess, I just want to show you the simple and easy moves in order to ensure that these are going to come out perfectly. This is the time to remember the advantages of silicone. And what you can do is actually grab both sides and just pull your mold side to side and you can see that separation between the gum paste and the actual mold. Now, what you can also do is pull it this way and look at that great separation that's happening. Another thing that you can do is actually push down from both sides and it kind of makes the hydrangea stand up like a little spider and now you know that you have perfect separation from the mold. Anyway, let me show you how we're going to unmold this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to turn it over and then I'm just going to start peeling back and there you have five hydrangeas perfectly detailed. You can cut, vein, and scribe in all one step. The way to form the hydrangeas or to actually dry them is to take this egg crate foam and just pick up your hydrangeas and put them down into those little pockets and let them dry just like that and you'll end up with these beautiful realistic 
hydrangeas, you can make a ton of them. So you can cluster these. You can put them anywhere on your cake and people will really react to them because they're thro so three-dimensional. They're going to think you worked forever on them. And in actuality, you've got the tool that's going to enable you to do this very, very quickly. Now, I want to say something to you professionals out there. You probably may think, well, I want my hydrangeas thinner. The thing that I want to make clear to you is you can sheet your gum paste as thin as you would like and use the petalier to create the hydrangeas very quickly, okay? There is a point where you could sheet it too thin and what would happen is is that you don't have enough thickness to actually fill the details that we have in the high in the petalier itself, okay? So there is a limit, but you could go thinner than this, okay? if you wanted that really professional look. Now, what I want to do is I want to come back, I'm going to fill this uh, petalier again, and I'm going to show you how you can attach wires to the hydrangea so you can use it in wired formations. All right, as promised, I'd like to show you how we can actually wire the hydrangeas so that we can use these hydrangeas in really great wired arrangements um, that's especially taught by James Rizal. And I want to tell you something right now. I'm not James Rizal. I'm not a flower expert. But I did want to include this segment in the video just so I could probably answer a lot of questions that you have about how can you use this in conjunction with wiring. So here we have the hydrangea petalier, and I want to make sure that I have really, really loosened my hydrangea, and I know that they're going to come out quite easily. Now that's very, very important. Secondly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gum paste, I'm going to make just a little, little cone, okay, just like that, okay? And now I'm going to take some gum glue, not a lot, okay? not a lot at all and I'm just going to put a very small amount on that center indentation that you see right here okay it's right in the center of the flower and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gum paste cone and I'm just going to put it right on top like that okay so we have a wire here and of course you put a little loop on the end which is going to enable the wire to kind of grip into the, the, um, the gum paste and I'm going to dip it into my gum glue, wipe off the excess, we don't want too much. Now here's what's important, if you don't do this step properly you're going to end up taking this pin or, or this, this uh, wire and pushing it too far and when you turn it over you're going to see that wire in the hydrangea itself which is no good, okay? So just take the wire and push it so that just the loop is embedded into the gum paste, okay? Now you can, while the hydrangea is in the petalier, you can hold the wire and you can form the cone around the wire in the way that you want, okay? You can unmold the hydrangea, and now you're not hurting the flower here when it, it uh, dra drapes down like that, that's no problem. And go ahead and, and kind of romance this, this gum paste in the way that you want up the wire. And then of course you can trim off the excess if you want. Now let me bring this over, and we have more of our egg crate foam and all I'm going to do is turn this over, push the wire through, and then we'll put it down in order to get that beautiful natural shape to the hydrangea and it's going to dry around that wire and then you can remove these and make beautiful clusters and cascades like you see James do. So that's how you would use the wiring with the petalier. 
So I hope that you take the opportunity to try the Petalier. I think that you will find it's a true innovation and an advancement in our industry. And it's going to enable you to make just a tremendous amount of these hydrangeas in a very small amount of time. And just think what that would look like if you could just embellish your cake with clusters of these beautiful flowers. I'm Dominic Palazzolo, owner of Marvelous Molds. I'd like to really thank you for watching and stay tuned because we got a lot more in store for you in 2015.